Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. When a man is successful, almost everyone would have something to say about him. But when coincidence becomes too many in a man's life, people will not just ponder over it, they'd reach a personal conclusion. Randolph Scott's private lifestyle rumour is something many will remember as part of Hollywood's handsome bachelors. They lived together off and on, and some say they were a couple, but he denied it perhaps a gossip that was taken too far. Were Randolph Scott and Cary Grant lovers or not? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Randolph Scott is that laconic cowboy film actor that you have heard and read about. He is one of the duo described as the two handsome bachelors in Hollywood. In case you are yet to watch his classic films, or that something about his lifestyle makes you want to know more about him, handsomely favoured to be a leading man in the American movie industry, Scott became one of the best in Hollywood, and most recognised among the Western stars of the industry's golden age. Some refer to him as the Hollywood heartthrob, perhaps because of his then uncertain close relationship with Cary Grant. He was always in the eye of the media for the same reason. A simple thing as a visit to Charlotte to see his family is often an occurrence for the local press to feast on, and Dilworth will always remember him as a son who contributed to the city's vibe. Scott grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, in a well-to-do family, and had a fair share of service with the US Defence Force in France, during World War I. He acquired tertiary knowledge in textile engineering and manufacturing before he found his fit in the fantasy world of Hollywood films. Keen interest in acting and the meeting with Howard Hughes marked the beginning of an acting exploit. After being contracted to tutor Gary Cooper in a Virginia dialect for The Virginian of 1929, a film that exposes a little about him, Paramount Scouts selected and offered him a contract and a play. Next he met Cary Grant, another Paramount personality that was part of Hot Saturday of 1932. It was reported that as soon as the duo met, they liked each other and subsequently moved in together. Their on and off living behaviour continued until 1942. Not even Scott's marriage to affluent heiress Marianne Dupont, which later crashed, could separate the two men. When he ventured into a leading role at Paramount, his simple nature was a charm that didn't say much about his incredible success to come. After performing excellently in different genres, including comedies, dramas and adventures, he shifted attention to westerns in the late 1940s, which made his career famous. How he was able to improve his character into a patient, rugged and unbending figure is quite spectacular and unconnected to the soft comedy main he performed in the 1930s, as he subsequently secured a place as one of the top box office stars of the 1950s. Consistently appearing in box office draw, Scott ranked 7th in 1951 in the yearly motion picture Herald Top 10 surveys, and also became the Quigley's Top 10 Money Makers poll between 1950 and 1953. Like they say, while we can't change the hands of time, we can always remember the things said about us, and sometimes facts that people will not easily forget about how we lived our life. That is why the gossip around Randolph Scott may linger for a while, not when new facts kept coming up to add credence to what people said about him. Will they have continued to live together if the criticism hadn't been so intense? Are they just roommates for nearly twelve years, enjoying each other's company at their Santa Monica beach house? Recall that Hollywood of the 1930s was operated in a strict and disreputable studio system that scrutinised, managed and nearly dictated an actor's private and public life, suggesting that Grant and Scott, as principal officers, would not have been permitted to openly indulge in homosexuality, not to talk of living as a couple, hence the need for Scott and his partner to keep it a secret. After retiring from acting as a multimillionaire because of judicious assets, Scott spent residual years unwinding with golf and staying off the film industry, inherently bordered by the wide publicity the industry attracts to his private life. 
George Randolph Scott is a notable American film actor born on the 23rd of January 1898 in Orange County, Virginia, but grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Those who were in the know about the going on in Hollywood around the late 1950s will remember Scott for his cinematic career that he exploited in a variety of genres, including the non-singing and non-dancing performances, mostly that enduring appearance of the the tall-in-the-saddle western hero. He appeared in over 100 films, with 60 of them in westerns. For some reason, his name became the most prominent among the stars whose name was associated with the western. Physically described as six foot two inches tall, lanky, well-built and good-looking fellow, Scott demonstrated an easy-going charm and the polite southern intonation at the beginning of his film career that were said to have helped him as an actor. As he grew in acting, he overcame his deficiencies, while his features became reflective and tough, as he exhibits that robust kind of stoic hero. Records show that Scott is second among six children of Scottish descent, George Grant Scott and Lucille Crane Scott. His parents were noble personalities. His father is a certified public accountant in North Carolina and his mother is a member of a rich North Carolina family. He was opportune to attend Woodbury Forest School, an expensive private school, where he exhibited excellent athletic skills, especially in football, baseball, horse racing and equally swimming. In the wake of World War I, 1917, Scott joined a unit of the North Carolina National Guard and was skilled as an artillery observer. He got promoted six months after to the rank of a corporal and a sergeant in February 1918. And by May 1918, Scott was already on active duty at Fort Monroe, Virginia, as part of the 2nd Trench Mortar Battalion that arrived in France in June 1918 and fought for the US. Immediately after the war, he was among the 2nd TM Battalion that participated in the post-war occupation of Germany as part of the US 6th Corps mission. Scott was later commissioned as a 2nd Lieutenant of Field Artillery in May 1919 before returning to New York on the 6th of June and was honourably discharged on the 13th of the same month. Perhaps his wartime experience added vigour to his acting career in terms of horsemanship and the handling of firearms. With his military service career over, Scott continued his knowledge endeavour at Georgia Tech, where he also became part of the Kappa Alpha Order and consequently prepares his footballing career. No thanks to the infamous back injury, which hindered what would have been another heroic career exploit on what he knows how to do best. But that did not end his vision, as he was moved to the University of North Carolina, where he acquired an advanced knowledge in textile engineering and manufacturing, before joining his father to work as an accountant in a textile company. When Scott showed interest in acting and decided to seek a career in the motion picture industry, it was easier for him as his father knew a contact that would help, Howard Hughes, the notable filmmaker. Hughes quickly got Scott a minor role in the movie Sharpshooters, from where he started making appearances in films and was sometimes uncredited in the films he featured in. Following informed opinion, Scott learned more about acting with stage performances at the Pasadena Playhouse and appeared in some plays like A Minister in Gentleman Be Seated and in 1932 Scott participated in a play at Vine Street Theatre in Hollywood known as Under a Virginia Moon. His recital got him film offers to key movie studios. That was how he ended with a seven-year deal with Paramount Pictures. His pioneer role in Paramount Pictures was successful after playing a supporting part in a comedy. He played a leading role in Heritage of the Desert in 1932, which made him a Western hero. He made several movie appearances in Western series and Paramount cast, including other non-Western roles. What about his marital life? Scott got legally married twice in his lifetime, First in 1936 to heiress Marion Dupont, but the union, which did not produce any offspring, unfortunately hit the rock three years later, and the two were separated. Although divorced, it was said that the heiress kept his last name until she died in 1983, and in 1944, after much career pressure and gossip, Scott united in holy matrimony with actress Patricia Stillman, who was much younger than him with two adopted kids. 
But there's another side to Scott's personal life that he probably must have kept secret all through his career and subsequent rise to fame. Unlike most famous motion picture actors, Randolph Scott kept a fairly small profile about his personal life. His off-screen social life was shrouded in gossip, and sometimes true stories of how he was not a straight man, especially with his close ties with Cary Grant, who was said to have lived with him for almost 12 years, which made the media nickname their beach house apartment and mansion as the Bachelor Hall. How he met Cary Grant while producing Hot Saturday in 1932, and how the two not only became friends, but had to move in as roommates in a shared beach house in Malibu, is the mystery that fans wanted to solve. Specifically, how they cooked and had domestic fun together is what many are still trying to understand, with speculators assuming that the duo was involved in a homosexual relationship. Their Santa Monica home ironically became known as Bachelor Hall, possibly in protest by his handlers against the widely assumed tales about the two being in a romantic affiliation at the time. Even as the buzzes persisted and the curiosity too, the two allowed themselves to be candidly photographed by a fan magazine which presented them as bachelors sharing unpretentious. The image had also added fire to the rumours as both were seen cheerful, laughing, exercising and making the dishes together, which analysts say is a perfect scenario of domestic bliss that most Hollywood conventional couples long for, but find difficult to achieve. Interestingly also, they may have reached an agreement not to disclose that aspect of their privacy, as both never publicly admitted if they were in romantic affairs or related kind of connection. Some writers allege that they may have kept it secret to avoid the possible consequences that may have arisen from the Hollywood's oppressively confined traditions. Even relative historical references show a clear lifestyle associated with homosexuals in Hollywood that were never projected. While both got married to two different influential women, Grant to Barbara Hutton, among the wealthiest women globally, and Scott to heiress Marion Dupont, in what could be described as a temporal separation, the duo soon returned to their companionship when both marriages fail. Recall that the two met in 1932 while on set for Paramount Pictures, and everything turns into a cosy affair. This exceptional friendship as part of the Blathers was once described by Carol Lombard as that in which Randy pays the bills and Carrie mails them. Another fellow identified as Richard Blackwell of the disreputable Mr Blackwell's annual best and worst dressed list noted in his biography that he mingled for months with them, asserting hitherto that they were deeply, madly in love, their devotion complete. It was obvious that all the buzzes generated did not go down well with the studios as Grant was ordered to get married in 1934, but Grant's marriage to Virginia Cheryl was doomed to fail as the two parted 13 months after, and Grant subsequently returned to Scott at the beach house. The two became a media sensation with tales of highly attractive young women entering and leaving the christened Bachelor Hall, while some said that the stories were manufactured by their handlers for the press to cover up for them. Others believed that it ironically gave credence to the rumours. The stories published according to a book excerpt publicised online depicted them as bachelors in desperate need of a woman in their life. Were they lovers or something no one cares to investigate? If the words of Grant's daughter Jennifer Grant are anything to go by, her memoir in 2011 argued against such as she noted thus, Dad somewhat enjoyed being called homosexual, he said it made women want to prove the assertion wrong. That may not be the case as some facts have emerged showing that Cary Grant and the Academy Award winning costume designer Ori Kelly, who was a known homosexual, was in a relationship with him in the 1920s before they parted ways for their various career dreams. With Ori Kelly acknowledging that both he and Grant did cool off together according to the 2016 documentary, there's little doubt at the moment about the nature of the relationship between Scott and Grant. Scott and Grant, however, halted their cohabitation in 1944, but remained handy friends for the rest of their lives. While Grant went on to wed actress Diane Cannon in a union that produced a biological daughter for him, Scott adopted two children in his second marriage.
Regardless of all the rumours and gossip about this ruggedly handsome star, Randolph Scott left a notable legacy in his lifetime with resounding achievements both in the military and Hollywood career, some of which included an In Memorandum Golden Boot Award, Golden Laurel nominee as top male star in 1958, Walk of Fame star winner for motion picture, and was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, Oklahoma, among others. After producing Ride the High Country in 1962, Scott took a final break from acting at the age of 64, as he was already a multi-millionaire by then, with a net worth of about $100 million in judiciously invested funds. He spent the rest of his life as an active golfer and practically avoided the movie industry as reported by several sources. Randolph Scott died on the 2nd of March 1987 when he clocked 89 at Beverly Hills, California, United States. Although facts about what led to his death remained sketchy, he may have died of a heart-related illness. Notable also is the fact that while Grant died in November 1986, Scott joined his ancestors too, three months after. But not only Randolph and Carrie's relationship raised some question in people's mind. How Marlon Brando played with James Dean for his own amusement? Find out from this video.